106 of the Ammo Training Academy, the most common detailing mistakes. Now in detailing, you're not judged by how good the car looks, you're actually judged by how many mistakes you make. So avoiding these can up your detailing game. There are a ton of common detailing mistakes that can easily be avoided. The number one in my mind is protecting your skin. You see in a lot of my videos, I'm wearing black gloves and they come in a box like this and you can get a couple hundred for, I don't know, 10 bucks and keep them in your cabinets over here and you're good to go. So I think a lot of people just jump in and they're all excited. Hey, I want to clean my car, but really you need to protect yourself. You can wear eye protection as well. Foot protection, meaning a lot of people will wash their car and it's 90 degrees outside and they're wearing shorts and sandals. Again, that's not a great idea. And it has really nothing to do with the car chemical. It's just chemicals in general. So think of this as a rule of thumb. If you're not gonna take a product, meaning anything underneath your sink, it doesn't matter what it is. And you're not gonna drink it, the same idea, then don't put it on your skin. So just protect yourself as much as humanly possible. Um, and it's just a smart, safe way to move forward, especially detailing. So keep that uh, in mind as you're continuing. Automotive clay is a huge source of confusion and thus creates a lot of mistakes when we're detailing our car. Confusion point number one is this. When you have scratches on your paint, people tend to think that clay is going to remove them. That is not true, that is false. So if you have a deep scratch or a medium scratch or even a light scratch on your car, it's not gonna be removed with clay. That is a massive point of confusion that I get a lot of emails on. The second one would be this theory or this thought that, hey, when I'm cleaning my car, maintaining my car, or detailing my car, I must use clay. That is also false, meaning if you just close your eyes and say, hey, on this car that I haven't seen, I haven't touched, and I haven't played with before, I'm gonna automatically have to clay it. That concept is false, why? This is a tool, it's like an emergency room. You don't wanna to go to it all the time, but when you need it, it's fantastic. I will make this point. Clay is unbelievably helpful to a pro, to a beginner, anyone, when you need it. So I wanna be very clear on that point, because if you use it too often, and you use it without lubrication, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and some quick ways you can use it in uh, the next chapter. But if you use it too often, you're gonna cause scratching in it because it is an abrasive. Just my finger wiping across the paint is considered an abrasive. This is technically uh, an abrasive as well. So keep those points in mind that uh, this bit of confusion uh, will create a lot of mistakes in detailing. Mistake number three is using an all-purpose cleaner on the interior. APCs, or all-purpose cleaners, typically leave the fibers in a high pH state after the cleaning process. This residue can make the fibers stiff and crusty while setting the stain permanently in the fibers. If you happen to use APC and it does dry, the next time you get in the car with wet shoes, it actually reactivates the cleaner, then the cleaner cleans your dirty shoes and is scrubbed clean by the carpet, creating more stains. The bottom line is this, a good rule of thumb is to keep APCs out of your interior. Common detailing mistake number four is accidentally applying sealants and waxes to your black trim. This will discolor the black plastic and require heavy cleaning and possible black dye to remove. Simply apply masking tape to the sensitive areas or stay one inch away during the wax application. One of my favorite mistakes I see at gas stations around the country is pulling your vacuum hose through the vehicle to reach the other side. The vacuum hose is always on the ground and usually rolling around in water or driveway grease, collects dirt, and then is rubbed against the side of the seat as it's being pulled through the car. A common mistake when washing your car is to substitute dish soap for car soap. Now, a lot of the beginners are gonna say, yeah, no, we've heard of that before, but I think I've seen some instances where we can use dish soap, and that, that is true. You can, you can mix these 50-50 if you want to strip off all the wax, all the old, dead, nasty stuff that's on your paint before you're gonna apply something like Reflex or before you're gonna compound your paint. But again, from the beginner perspective, you do not wanna use this in a pinch because you do not have car soap, and I'll tell you the short explanation why. When you're washing dishes, let's say lasagna dinner, you have fats and oils, what they call lipids, lipids on, on the dish. So you use this to remove the lipids. And ever you see the commercial where you squeeze the plate and it goes, it makes that noise, that means it's clean. You don't wanna do that on paint, why? Because we've put lipids, we put fats, we put uh, waxes and coatings and things. We wanna keep that nice and hydrophobic. So hopefully you get that little difference. You can be uh, that much smarter than your next door neighbor when you see him washing the, your, the car with dish soap. Say, no, don't do that. Number seven is washing your detail towels incorrectly. Detailing towels are pretty much my number one detailing tool, so caring for them properly is essential. 
Never wash them with other clothes or towels because the microfiber will collect the lint and become useless. Always use a liquid detergent, not a powder, because any undissolved powder could scratch the paint and dry the towels separately from clothes on low heat. If you happen to use high heat, it'll actually singe the hooks, causing them to curl over and not pick anything up, defeating their useful life. Washing in direct sunlight can cause a lot of extra work because the product itself is drying prematurely on the paint, leaving it unlubricated during the wipe. And as you know by now, wiping with little to no lubrication will cause scratching. Washing your car in early morning or late afternoon is usually the safest time to work outdoors. Number nine is dry wiping the paint. Touching the paint without proper lubrication is worse than actually not touching it at all. Your hand is an abrasive, so wiping your hand across the paint is gonna scratch it. Unless there's an emergency like a bird poo on your paint, just leave the dust and dirt alone until you can wipe, clean, and wash it properly with water as a lubricant. Cleaning your wheels last is not only inefficient, it's potentially dangerous to your paint. So if you do clean your wheels last, that inherently means you have to clean the paint first. If, however, you wash the paint first, you must dry your paint immediately to avoid watermarks. However, if you dry your paint after the wash, then you rinse your wheels down and clean them, you inevitably splash your paint with water and have to wipe it again and again. This is not only inefficient, it will actually add to the time it takes to complete a car wash. Always do your wheels first. And finally, the car duster. This tool is not suitable for safely picking up the contaminants because no lubricants are used in the process. Instead, it's dragged across the paint, creating love marks or fine scratches. Here are three quick reminders of mistakes we've already covered in previous chapters, but still must be avoided. One, don't use chamois, beach towels, or water blades to dry your paint. Two, most people get excited about a shiny car, but they forget to clean their tools before cleaning their car. Make sure your buckets, grit guards, wash mitts, and brushes are thoroughly washed out before you jump right into a job. And number three, cross-contamination. Don't forget this. Do not mix tools, buckets, or applicators during the cleaning or protecting process. Now at this point, your car is totally clean and totally protected, and it looks spectacular. So the next step is, how do we maintain it going forward? Clearly, I just cleaned this car and we're on camera, so I can't necessarily do this one. But for the next step, we're gonna work on the Ammo 964. It's right over here. This is just one video within the Ammo Training Academy. To go through the entire course and to learn how to detail your car properly, visit AmmoNYC.com and click on the training link.